Welcome back to 40K Fanatics, everyone. My name is Shane. We've got Casey here. Hey, guys. Today, it's another lore video. We're going to let Casey drive. I drove last time in the gaming video. Why do I keep saying video? We don't do video yet. Yeah, it's a pod. It's a pod, man. It started as video, and then we were like, video's hard, yeah. so it would be an audio medium, and now it's just a pod. Yeah, uh, and today we're talking about a little bit more lore-focused stuff this time. Casey's going to drive, and I'm going to ask the questions. I'm kind of new. Casey is less new. He likes the lore. I like the gaming. We both like painting, and I'm just going to let you know. Coming soon, I think next episode, episode after next, we're gonna we're gonna play. We're gonna play. We're gonna we're gonna play dangerous. Okay. You ever meet anybody that they they're not a crackhead, but they do occasionally use just a little bit of the rock. What are you talking about, so, man? What? So, so what I'm what this I'm saying is coming out of nowhere. <laughs> what I'm saying is coming soon. There's going to be a painting video, and we're going to do uh, our very, very best not to become a painting podcast. We we are because I love painting, and I will talk. See, someone's here. See, you're about to do it. I'm not going to do it. That, but that, that's what happens. That's the danger let's, of let's, sampling let's, the rock. Come on, let's 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 roll. Let's roll with this. Okay, <laughs> we're talking about space marines today, guys. Your local lore master, Casey, here, and your local guy with an ear, Shane, here. Well, we're talking about the Space Marines, so let's get into it. What's a Space Marine? So, let's start off with the Emperor of Mankind and just do a little, like, in between there. We, uh, we got the Emperor. He just finished um, taking over most of Earth, and he's about to take over the galaxy, so he needs an army. And what does he do? He m goes into his secret labs, recruits some scientists, grabs all the stuff that he can from the Dark Age of technology, and then he makes his Primarchs, his sons, born from his DNA, and he keeps them in test tubes until they're finished. From their DNA, he makes 20 legions of space marines. Soldiers made to be far better than super. They are called transhuman. And, man, the stuff that they can do can blow your mind. They're not clones. No, they're not clones. Basically, you will take a 10 to 16-year-old child, and it has to be a boy because the emperor is a man. And don't attack me. Don't attack me, Twitter. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so basically, yeah, I said basically again. Um the Emperor would take these 10 to 16-year-old kids and he would turn them into Space Marines. He tried with the Thunder Warriors, which were these barbaric guys who basically grew up Mad Max style. They were adult men and they'd already had their core values from the post-apocalyptic wasteland that they lived in. And essentially, they weren't soldiers, they weren't warriors, they were just killers. So... He genetically altered these guys to be big, buff, super crazy stuff, tough dudes, but their bodies just couldn't handle it. So he made the Space Marines, guys that he could make mentally tough, spiritually tough, and hold the noble ideals of what humanity is. So, Space Marines. We're talking eight to possibly even ten feet tall transhuman demigods. They're very cool. And now... So he made the Primarchs, and then somewhere there became a whole legion of other Space Marines. Yes, while he was working on the Primarchs, they kind of got grabbed and thrown somewhere else, and he didn't have access to them anymore. But from the DNA and everything he had, he used their DNA to make the Space Marines. Um, the Space Marines were made, and each legion carried the DNA of their Primarch father. Essentially, whereas the the Space Marines have a Primarch, the Primarchs have the Emperor. Right. So getting into that, uh, they started out as 20 Legions, 20 Primarchs. Uh, and they started fighting with the Emperor on Terra to take over Terra. Um, each one... Man, I have so much notes. We're gonna, each one eventually became a chapter after a lot of stuff, a lot of heresy, a lot of crazy stuff. We're not going to go into too much detail because we'll be here forever. Yeah, I mean, the Primarchs, even is the little bit that I understand, we could get into a whole episode about each each and every one of them. Yeah, Games Workshops had 40K around since the 80s, and I think they just ended the Horus Heresy books now. I think there's like 150 books. 
and we're not going to cut into that. <laughs> Anyways, going back to these Space Marines, the Legions, and then eventually the Chapters, we're going to fr- call them Chapters from now on. Okay. These Chapters will inherently have a recruiting world. They'll go to these places, and typically these worlds will be really, really bad places. I'm talking your post-apocalyptic wastelands, your jungle planets, your ocean worlds, things with giant monsters, some with dinosaurs, some with chaos beasts. And they pick these places because only through the rough, tough stuff that people evolve through thousands of years of can the cream of the crop be produced. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, to receive the gene seed and the various uh, whatnots that it takes to make the space marine. Yes, you need to be mentally tough, physically tough, spiritually tough. You need to embody the basic, most important stuff that it is to be human. So we've got space marine chapter planets running around. Yes. Checking people's midichlorian count. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So then they go down to these planets and they hold recruitment. So these primitive people who are usually cavemen-like, don't get me wrong, they do recruit from some civilized worlds. But they pick the killers, the gang members, the the fighters from these people, the 10 to 16-year-old kids, and they start the initiation. So they throw them into these trials to see if they're worthy and if they pass these trials then they test them they test them on a genetic level they test them for any chaos chaos you know influence through the chaplaincy and then they decide who is worthy and who can actually take the gene seed of their primarch yeah and the gene seed if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is one of these various surgeries that the Space Marines have to have to make them 10 feet tall and bulletproof and Basically. super smart and able Basically. to breathe, you know, mustard gas and all kinds oh, of other craziness. Um, there's actually a really good video series on YouTube by uh, Dr. Chris Rayner, Not Your Everyday Ortho, mm-hmm. and he's got an ongoing series. I think there's one more oh, video Oh, is that left. doctors reacting to Space Marine? It's this doctor, yeah. and, he's, and he's like, uh, if we... Advanced medical technology, you know, for another 38,000 years, what would some of these uh, written about space marine medical procedures that are required actually look like? And it's, mm-hmm. it's a really good series of videos. Yeah. So then – and I, can't, I, really, I really need to get, get on watching that because I've, I've seen it. Um, I've seen it pop up, but I need it. So then these he initiates – these initiates have passed the test, and they can be anything like crazy, like the Raven Guard. They have their initiates sneak through the cities and the mines and find these Kiavaran birds, and they have to quietly sneak up, grab the birds, and keep them alive, and bring it back to a space marine. And that's why the Raven Guard will like carry bird skulls on their armor. But then you've got people like the Imperial Fists who want to prove that you can get through anything and that you can withstand whatever. And they'll throw you in something called the Tunnel of Terror, where it is a long, plant moon, small moon-sized tunnel maze that each room changes temperature, vacuum, air environment, and you're just trying to survive. These are the good guys. The, these are the good guys because they want to bring out... The people who can make it. Yeah. Uh, Defiant. Strong-willed. People like that. Because the more strong-willed you are, the more resistant to chaos you are. Right. But also don't mix up strong-willed with, like, free thinking because the indoctrination then proceeds to get real, real serious. Yes, there is a thing called hypno-indoctrination. So right now we have finished the initiation. We've done We've done about that. We're done. We're moving on to the surgeries. So now you've got this kid from 10 to 16 who has been accepted. He's an initiate, and he has been genetically, spiritually tested to become a space marine. So they make him a neophyte. And a neophyte goes to the scout company of a chapter. So the scout company are basically like people becoming space marines in the process. They go through the augmentations, but it is also a battlefield role. 
they're scout snipers because apparently as you're young and your body is developing, it's easier for things like indoctrination or genetic modification to take hold. And on top of that, battle and stimuli to your body make the process go much smoother. So you'll have these guys with sniper rifles, you know, crawling through the bush trying to get there. Yeah, and then at this point, they're just regular people. Well, they're slightly elevated. They're stronger than normal people because they've had some of the implants. Let's, oh, I see. Yeah, so now we're going to go into the implants. So first off, you get a second heart <laughs> to help that blood pump around that giant space marine body. Like a Klingon. Yeah, the fir- that second heart will boost your blood levels, survive in low oxygen environments, and help prevent injuries. Phase two, you get the thing called the osmodula, which is a tube-shaped... Or I'm going to rattle these off real fast. Yeah, because they are they are maybe you know five parts nonsense, 19. five parts. There are nineteen organs. Science. Now there's twenty one, but we'll go into that. So phase two, the osmodula. It's a small tube-shaped organ, secretes hormones, and causes your bones to harden and become like ceramic. They're space marines. Rib cages are basically solid, rigid levels of plates, almost an entire solid mass of bone, like ceramic. All of their long bones will grow. Uh, they'll harden to crazy levels. After that, you've got the biscopia, which is implanted in the chest as well. Small, it's a hormonal thing. It causes your muscles to grow. After that, you've got a hemostamen which is a tiny organ that's implanted into like a major blood vessel, like your aorta, whatever, any artery. And it monitors and controls the last two organs that I mentioned and increases your blood's efficiency, which is, you know, if you're that big, you need something going. After that, you got the Lehrman's organ. A lot of people talk about this. It's a liver-shaped organ about the size of a golf ball put in the chest cavity with the blood vessel, and it basically sends out the cells that... If a space marine gets cut, he'll heal faster, called yeah. the Lehrman cells. Or if he's grievously wounded, it scars almost instantly. After that, you got the catalepsian node, which is a pea-sized thing in the brain, in the back of the skull. They basically drill in and put it in. You're not getting these organs all at once, folks. You're getting them over time in different phases. Real quick, and I don't – I mean, maybe I guess you know because you're the lore master, What's Casey. That? Are the space marines immortal unless chopped down by functionally some thing? Functionally immortal. The original template for the space marines, they were made to be basically immortal. We don't know that with the Primaris because they're the closest to the original space marine template. But these guys who've been around for 10,000 years, the gene seeds degraded, you know, it's gone from person to person. They don't live forever, but, I mean, you've got Dante of the Blood Angels, and he's 1,450 years old, but his aging is starting to show. Hmm. I I mean, they're pretty freaking awesome. So at some stage, would they clone Dante and make another one, or? We'll get into that later. I've got a big surprise for that. After that, uh, so we're back on the catalepsy known. This basically is inserted in the back of the brain and allows a space marine to shut off different... parts of his brain effectively making them sleep so that he doesn't have to that way they can fight forever and not have to sleep they just say oh my left brain will shut off my right brain will take over and keep chopping up these basically yeah it's crazy this is probably the next phase and you'll get these get these implants again over until around 18 years old So if you're like a 10-year-old until you're 18, over time in different phases. Uh, We got the preomnor, which is like a second stomach that doesn't digest anything. But it does identify poisonous foods, plants, and unedible material and makes them edible. I mean, just space marines out in the field eating a bucket of screws. Seriously, I I, I just love the image of a space marine in my head eating a tree. (laughs) <laughs> just makes it, I'm just like that's I don't I don't think there are any trees it's available. stupid but I love it <laughs> if if there were trees it probably wouldn't be only yeah. war we've got omophagia which is the phase eight it's placed in the spinal cord but becomes part of the brain it is connected between your neck and your chest part of your spine and learns 
the brain by eating animal tissue. Oh, yeah. This is a ridiculous one. It's so cool. It's the idea that the space marine can eat a piece of, a, you know... An alien? Of whatever. A deer? Yeah. And then figure out some stuff about it. Learns its memories. I read a book where the ultramarines were fighting a Tau, and a sergeant of the ultramarines ha- was behind enemy lines, and to help out his buddies, he saw a crashed Tau like speeder and it took the dead pilot and ate his brain and he knew how to fly this speeder. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I think it's great. It's absurd. It's so cool. I, I'm not saying I don't like it. It's just very silly. Phase nine, you've got the multi-lung. That's right. These dudes have three lungs. It basically is to control the flow of oxygen, gives them a more functional breathing system in the low oxygen environment in case ever exposed to vacuum or near vacuum. It also chokes their trachea so that it breathes instead of the primary lungs so that, uh, you know, if there's any toxins coming in, it takes over. Then you've got the oculope, a slug-like organ at the base of the brain which allows adaptability to low light. And this is important because Shane mentioned hypto indoctrination. This and the last few brain implants I've talked about actually don't work unless you've gone through hypno indoctrination and chemical and or chemical dependence. These are the good guys. Yeah. And base and this oculobe lets, lets them see, see in, the, in dark. the dark. Yeah, it lets them see in the dark or the low light. And it seems like that could have been worked into the big helmets. But it doesn't it doesn't work on its own. They have to learn how to use it, which is where the hypno indoctrination. It's basically like if the, you were in the Matrix or a simulation or something. You have to have Kung Fu downloaded, and you and you're literally reliving the memory of somebody else, probably going through this training, basically. And that's what like twelve basically so far. It's a lot of basically, <laughs> a lot of basically. Lyman's ear, the phase eleven organ. Enhances and filters types of noise in the background, so you, they can't get nauseous or dizzy from disorientation. That's neat. So if they're stuck in space, I guess you know yeah. they, they don't get dizzy or being or being jostled by a angry orc. Yeah, throttled more likely. Uh, Susan membrane. It's a flash disc-like organ that's laid over the top of the brain and eventually grows and merge is with the brain of the recipient. Uh, this is also one of those organs that is switched on by chemical therapy or hypno indoctrination, and they have to learn how to use. What it do? It makes the space marine go into suspended animation. Oh right, this they're in their Primark that got just chopped all the way up, and he went into suspended animation for ever. Yes, um, I have the record. The longest ever period of time a space marine has been in this state is five hundred and sixty-seven years. That was performed by a dark angel. Wild. But they can't wake up on their own. No, no, no. I mean, this is just, you've been mortally wounded. You're, you're shutting down. Your whole self goes into, into stasis yep. as you just lay there on the battlefield. you got to give them chemicals and coax them in through therapy to wake up. Probably patch up the holes and stick new bits on too basically that's what i do in my hobby shop um phase 13 melanochrome it's a hemispherical black organ it adjusts and monitors the skin because if they're exposed to things like radiation or you know sunlight radiation they have to adjust it literally changes the color of their skin and secretes oily mucus to you know keep radiation from affecting their skin So it's like another layer of defense under their armor from things like that. Phase 14, we've got the oolitic kidney. It is a red-brown heart-shaped organ, modifies the circulatory system. It works with a number of the other things that we've already talked about. Get the poison out. Yeah, it passes um, through blood through the body quicker and more efficiently and works with the second heart to keep the space marine alive in times of crisis. You know, in case the first heart is destroyed, then that second heart kicks in and saves them. If a passed out, it, it, uh, it also makes the space marine pass out, which I think is hilarious. Um, if they're ever exposed to extreme poison so that it circulates the blood faster through their body. Here's looking at you, Nurgle. 
Phase 15, neuroglottis, which is inserted in the mouth, uh, in the back of the throat. It lets the space marines identify poisons in food and by taste, chemical odors, things like that. It helps them track by taste, effectively, if they need it in a pinch. After that, phase 16, the mucronoid, which is implanted in the small intestine, and it secretes mucus that helps the, with uh, temp in a vacuum. Not, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of a weird organ. I don't really. Yeah, the I mean the the cross section the the sort of like intersection between silly sci fi science and medicine here is one of the stranger things and, about the forty k lore. Yeah, and but the weird thing is they you see the reason why they need it. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. I I just think uh, I was having a conversation at the friendly local game store about this the other day because. I had just watched that video that we talked about, yeah. and it's real heavy in the minutia about the sort of reality of these things, it's right? Really They've got these sort of scientific names, and it's like all this, you know, sci-fi, Star Trekky science that you could believe in the same universe that the orcs, by their belief in some <laughs> object functioning, just works. It's uh, and you know that's one of the reasons why I hate things like chaos because the space marines do all this stuff. The forces of the Imperium can be as ready as they possibly can, and then they're like, "We've won. The chaos is done." And then chaos is like, "No, we're not. We're like what? Warp spaghetti, <laughs> right in your face." And I'm just that. Oh, that that makes that pisses me off every time. <laughs> Anyways. Back to the organs. We got the Betcher's gland next, which is probably the most um, talked about. And do you know this one? No. No? The Betcher's gland is actually two implants in the hard palate, which is the roof of your mouth and your lower lip. And it makes the space marines secrete a spit of blinding corrosive poison. All the time? Whenever they want, really. This is one of those ones where they have to learn to use it. But yeah, if they spit in somebody's face, it melts their head. I mean, that might as well be a thing that happens, I guess. And also, you've got, like, genetic deviation, and, and some chapters actually lose this. Like, the Imperial Fists, which is a popular chapter and a very well-known chapter, Space Marine, they actually have lost the use of their Betcher's Clan. They, they can't use it anymore. Because they're the ones that just shoot stuff, right? Well, they, they build. So I, maybe that's it. Maybe they're just so used to building walls, they don't want to break any down. But it, it, but essentially, this was implanted so if the space marine is behind enemy lines and is captured and put in a cage, they can melt the bars. Right? Ridiculous. I love it. I, I love it too, but it, it th this is the sillier side of the thing. All right, the last two. The last big ones, and I'm talking big. The progenoid glands, which basically form the gene seed. We mentioned gene seed earlier. Yeah. Gene seed is produced from a primark. Essentially, it is a genetic sample that they derive these organs from. I think of it like, oh, it's a vial. This vial gives me instructions on how to clone these organs and implant it in a space marine. I hope it, we don't get it in the vial the way I think we do. The, lo the lore is a little like vague on it, but it, yeah. I'm not mad about it. I mean, I think it's cool. So, a space marine... We'll get one progenoid in the neck and one progenoid in the chest. It grows over time and absorbs hormonal stimuli and genetic material from all of the other implants and essentially the space marine it's been implanted in. After five years, the neck gland is mature, and after ten years, the chest gland is mature. These can say, contain a single gene seed, both of them. Mm. So if a space marine is ever wounded or killed on the battlefield, an apothecary comes over, cracks open his chest, extracts the progenoid gland, and that is where they get more gene seed to keep their chapter going and make more space marines. Right, because the Primarch's not necessarily chilling with a magazine making a lot of exactly files. They need more gene seed to keep space marines going. It's been the death of chapters countless times. Um, let's see. Yeah, so they need this gene seed or they can't make more organs to make more space marines. And over time, we've seen these 10,000 years pass due to these progenoid glands going from person to person and making space marine, space marine. The DNA gets a little finicky or degraded. 
and I've seen like screens where the pro they've got like vials and vials of progenoid glands, and it, one is like seventy eight percent, one's twenty five percent, one's like eighty percent, you know. And if you think about it, some of these chapters aren't as pure as they were when they were made. So, despite all the uh, rigorous, um, uh, I, don't, I don't even want to call it uh, testing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I started to say recruiting, but Recru- it, it's hardly recruiting. I mean, but, if you're offered and you join willingly, are you a recruit? <laughs> you know, I I don't know. It it seems like they're taking <laughs> you out of a bad situation and getting you into a worse one. But that may be a topic for another day. Yeah. But even still, <laughs> so now you're a recruit and you've passed the trials and all that, and then they give you the old twenty two percent gene seed. Yeah, and th- that also, and then you're a kind of crap space yes, marine because your body can reject these organs. You could die and shut down. They have to – a space marine is constantly monitored, and they don't even talk about this a lot. A space marine through his lifetime is constantly monitored by the apothecaries of the chapter and given chemical treatments to keep going. They can still live. There's a good chance they'll still live. But without these chemical treatments, you know, maybe some stuff could happen, mutation, deviation, rejection, stuff like that. Well, and, I mean, they're not just sitting on the couch. Oh yeah, that, I mean they're busy. They're busy. Yeah. They're they're busy uh, dealing with ten kinds of hell. Exactly from all over the place. They know no fear. <laughs> uh, other space marines. Yes, the tyranids that we talked about last week. Um, last last week? organ week before. Let's hit the last organ. Timelines got messed up. So yeah, it's it's weird. Last organ. Last. Well, it's sort of an organ. It's called the black carapace. What they do is they crack this seal on a. Essentially a back to tank, you know, it's a sterilized tank of fluid. They pull out this big sheet like black plastic and they implant it under the skin. By the way, they're doing all of this usually without anesthesia. Just because? Because you have to be that tough. This is part of the process. You need they need to know that you can handle anything. That's why when you see a space marine on the battlefield, he gets his arm chopped off and he's acting like nothing's wrong. That's why. Like, the, I, I read the Marnius Calgar, who's the chapter master of the Ultramarines. He was literally on the table with his left pectoral skin peeled back, looking down at it as they were inserting the black plastic of the black carapace like it was freaking nothing. Like, now he I, was just at the dentist. And I guess it's like bulletproof, fireproof. Well, issue is sort of. It's basically implanted on the skin. After a few hours, it expands, hardens, and sends neural, bunder, neural bundles deep inside to your nervous system. And then at, you have to hold, keep this in your body for months, and then it it's permanent. And after those months, it's matured and hardened. So kind of another little level of protection. Um, then you are fitted with neural sensors and transfusion ports that are cut into your skin into this ner- into this black carapace. Oh, this is the stuff that runs the power armor. Isn't yes, it? basically, this connects with your nervous system to run the power armor. Can you imagine though? This thing is connected to your nervous system, and they are shoving crap through into it to connect you to a piece of power armor. That is why their uh, vital signs and medical functions of their armor monitor them so well because of this black carapace. Crazy. And for the firstborn Marines, this is the fi- this was the final last bit they had to do, and they are considered a full space marine. Firstborn. Firstborn. Now we have the Primaris, the Primaris Marines, and we are in the Indomitus era, which Gilliman came back. He's like had a buddy named Belisarius Call who popped a bunch of space marines out of the cooler that are bigger, badder, and better than the firstborn marines. They have three more organs than the normal firstborns. Yay! Making them bigger, faster, their thinking processes are quicker, and uh, they're actually a little closer related to their primarch than the firstborns were. Wow. Exactly. They have the sinew coils, which are implanted around the same time as the third organ we mentioned. It can. It is the only inorganic part that is put into a space marine. It's basically a bunch of steel cables connected to your muscles, tendons, and ligaments to help you lift stuff even more than 
A, your body, and B, your power armor help you. Wow. Yeah. I mean... And it's kind of an extra f- sense of defense, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff is... Uh, it, They're metal coils. Yeah, I mean, it's wild to me that... And I hear that it's different in the books. In the books, the Space Marines are super bad all the time. Mm-hmm. They they show up, they wreck shop. In the game, it seems that none of this makes any difference to that chain sword coming from somebody. But if you think about it, that's the grim darkness of the 40K setting. Oh, yeah. All of this, and yet that orc is just going to peel you apart with his bare hands. That is the force that meets, the that levels the playing field. To be on that playing field, you need to be augmented this bad. It's wicked. It makes the Astra Militarum dudes seem, seem so brave. Exactly. Because they've got, they run around here in little tanks and buggies, Fly. and some of those guys are walking around with some rifles and just getting slaughtered in mass. Exactly. Last two organs the Magnificat, a thumbnail sized lobe put in the brain's core. Grown in conjunction with other organs, half of the dual valve immortalis clan that was put in the primarchs. Oh, okay. So, that so Ad- the primarchs Mag- have bits that the space marines don't? Dude, I have heard of a time when a, an apothecary of the space marines cracked open a primarch and was like, I don't even know what the hell this stuff is. Wow. So, so the emperor was some sort of scientist he was, more than he was a warlord. Oh, hundred percent. He was a warlord. He was a scientist. He was a psyker. Uh, he was. People say he was a bad dad. On top of it, <laughs> so, I, I mean, certifiably bad dad. Oh, hundred percent. So when this guy, this admet guy, made the Primaris Marines to improve and make more. He found he was given the blueprints for the Space Marines, unfiltered gene seed, and the original blueprints. He was given everything, even to the legions that turned traitor, the ones that weren't found, which are the two lost legions. We'll talk about that another time. And basically all of the cliff notes from the Emperor. But this organ, he only got half of it, half the blueprints for this organ. What does it do? Basically, it makes them um, bigger. It <laughs> basically so the so the eight to ten becomes uh, ten to twelve. Yeah, basically, they're like you'll see a firstborn space Say marine standing next one more to more time, a, Casey. I'm gosh. Ah, essentially, a firstborn space marine will stand next to a primaris, and he'll have to look up because he's one to two feet taller than him. It, it's what makes them closer related to their primarchs. And, you know, to my favorite segment, is there a model? Uh, all the modern space marines are considered Primaris. Yes. And they look so good, especially if you compare them to the old school guys. Yes. They're they're taller. They're more detailed. They're in badass poses. 100%. More modifiable, better paintable. Uh, but, you know, I feel bad that they're kind of getting rid of the first porns. I think they could do, like, maybe a character series or something. But we'll talk about that. Of little dinky characters? I mean, they're cool. They are cool. They are cool. I mean, look, we still have them. Yeah. Stand them next to your, you know, rank (laughs) rank and file space marine, and they look look wimpy. They still look dope, yeah. Um, Then we've got the last organ, the Belisarian Furnace, which is exclusive to the Primaris Marines, as I said. It is basic. It is essentially put into their chest, and it is like a pharmacopoeia of... Adrenaline, stims, uh, healing factor stuff, you know, things that make them move faster, fight harder, think quicker, and heal faster. And it is only used kind of like how you think a mom has to lift her car off her baby. Right. Times of extreme. When you need it. Yeah, exactly. Times of extreme stress or, you know, they're about to die. This thing kicks on and sends their body into overdrive. It expels all these chemicals, and they can come back from pretty much dying. And if they don't, they'll go into stasis and uh, hope that they don't get eaten by and the I, tyranid. And I think that this process, this surgery process with the primaris is so new, they actually don't even know when this one is even inserted. Yeah, on top of all of that. So we've talked about primar- We've talked about a little about primarchs. We talked about space marines. 
We've talked about Gene Seed and all the stuff you have to go through to be a Space Marine. Does it seem worth it, Shane? Uh, you know, if they're taking you out of some totally desolate, hellhole, overrun planet, then I guess so. Yeah. Um, yeah. But otherwise, it seems like a hard way to go. And for your troubles, you get shuttled around to Endless War forever and always. Because I, I just have to imagine, yeah. somewhere in the galaxy, there's got to be there's some planets more. where some guys are just growing potatoes. Yeah. They're, I mean, they recruit from places like that. I mean, you've got the Ultramarines. They don't just recruit from their home world. They recruit from farm worlds. And you've got places like the Crimson Fist. And you've got Black Templars flying all over the place. And they recruit from any other planet. So, yeah. Um, and on top of that, they have to hope that this gene seed still works. Right. And, I mean, I that's that has been my favorite little nugget from this is... You go through all this, and you find out that you've got the 20% pure gene seed, and you become a bit of a crap space marine. Yeah, I mean... Which has got to be a feel bad. It's like, okay, buddy, you're going you're gonna to drive the rhino. Very popular. That, that's your job. Very popular chapter, The Emperor's Spears. There's a book. They got the Primaris Marines a little late to the party. They weren't given uh, very good instructions. They tried to make Primaris Marines a lot of successes. A lot of failures, though. The bodies were warped and changed unimaginably, and one guy lived. He's basically hunched backed, gimping with one leg. He's blind in one eye, but they're so lack of, you know, resources, and they have to protect the whole sector of space. They kept this guy alive to captain a ship. Wild. I know. Absolutely right? wild. Well, Ka Casey is being beckoned by his, uh, by his gene seed carrier. Yeah, my my gene seed, <laughs> my my gene seed is get has started to call me back home to Terra, folks. So, so let's wrap with this. Can you name all the chapters? Because I certainly can't. That's the thing. After the legions were broke up, we were given so many chapters on chapters on chapters. There's said to be over a thousand at this point, countless. And so, the Indominus so Crusade resupplied them. On top of, these successors have to give 5% of their gene seed every now and again to the Adeptus Mechanicus so they can make more chapters. Wow. I mean... If you're scrapped for gene seed, you're kind of screwed there. Though. No doubt. So, for the new people, because we are trying to keep this for the newer people with 10th edition coming out, the blue ones with the gold trim, those are the Ultramarines. Yep, everybody loves everybody, everybody loves, loves ultramarines. Some ultramarines. Uh the gray ones are the gray knights with the psychic powers which uh have gene seed derived from the emperor himself it is said. Um the custodies, the custodies are his personal guard. Yes, a faction that actually are not fully space marine. If we're going as far from humanity, it goes you and me, baseline humans. Yeah. Space Marines. Then Custodes, Primarchs, and Emperor. If you were going in an evolutionary track, that's how it would go. The Custodes are derived from the gene seed of the Emperor, and they're actually taken as babies from the nobles of Terra, and they are actually gene forged personally by the Emperor. These guys are, are literally immortal. No one's seen, if, even if they die. I mean, if they, if they don't die in battle, they keep going. They've been around since the inception over 10,000 years ago, and they don't age. Wow. See, I didn't know that. And I thought they were just another bunch of goons. You thought they were more space marines? I mean, they look like space marines. They've no. got armor. Like a, a one custodies can kill like a whole squad of space marines without flinching. Well, see, in the game, I always take Abaddon and... Bring me all your custodies. Oh my god, Abaddon doesn't care. I, I can't. I can't even believe you right now. He doesn't it's, care. He's like, I, bring more cust custodies, please. I will chop more in half. Somebody get him some Parmesan for all that warp spaghetti he's throwing around out here. I uh, I played my first two K game the other day. Oh yeah, how'd that go? Well, we played a Who'd space green chapter. I played the Black okay. Templar. The opposite of the Grey Whoa. Knights because they don't mess with the psychic at all. Nope, they don't. They don't. They don't mess with it at all, but they look cool. Yeah, they've got a they got a real like sort of, um, they've got like a like a, a medieval monk 
thing going yeah. on that I like. Yeah. And uh, Abaddon and them boys beat them down. And that's the best part about 40K, in my opinion. The, there are so many chapters out there and so many successor chapters out there. You can make any kind of Space Marine chapter you want, any color scheme, any type of fighting you want. They could succeed any Space Marine chapter out there that has rules, or you could say they're a successor chapter and change those rules. Yeah, I mean, because there's silly paint schemes that go with these two, which, I of mean, course, paint the, them up however you want and then the call them whatever sharks. you want. Space Sharks? I don't know anything about Space you Sharks. You don't know the Space I, Sharks. I was thinking about, is it, is it uh, Imperial Fists that are, that are yellow? Yes, but I mean, how do you how do you not know the space sharks? I don't know the space sharks. The Carcharodons. I know the space wolves. Yeah, well, they're pretty cut and dry. They're pretty cool. Uh, and culture affects every space marine legion. The it, based on their planet, based on their primarch. You know, you get the Raven Guard. They're from Corvus Corax, the primarch, and they're all of them eventually when they become space marines have pale skin, long greasy black hair. And then you got Conrad Kerr's pale, greasy skin, black eyes, sharpened teeth. You got Sanguinius. You'll grow blonde hair and angelic, pure skin. But the Carcharodons I love because nobody knows who they are, who their lineage comes from. So you can choose any chapter in the book to play them as. Neat. And lore-wise, they have black eyes, pale skin, sharp teeth, rubbery texture to their skin on top of all of this. They look dope. A little lizard and people sort of thing possibly going on there? Well, they're space sharks. So space you, sharks. You're not far, you're not far off. Uh, I want to hear a pod about the space wolves because those dudes look wicked. Oh, yeah. And in time, we'll do all that. We're going to basically probably hit, and there was another basically there. We're going to hit the Primarch, and then we're going to go to their Legion. And then we're going to go to the next Primarch. And then we're going to go to their Legion. I like it. After time, I'm hoping that we can hit really cool successor chapters. You know, the famous ones like you've mentioned, Black Templars, a couple times. They're pretty awesome. And uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. But we, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Next thanks. week, we've got a painting video. We do. Uh, check out the pod on all the places you get the pod. Rate and review. Subscribe if you're not. Follow it. Uh, we're on Twitter as well. Follow Casey at what is your Twitter handle? It should be 40K Fanatics. 40K. I think, I think we were lucky enough to get we'll Search that. 40K Fanatics on Twitter and find us and tell us what you think. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, how obnoxious I am not knowing anything about <laughs> the lore. Uh, we're we're going to. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to sample next week. We're going to take just a sample, just a taste, just one hit. That's we're, all we're taking. We're probably going to be here a while. <laughs> we're we're, we're going we're gonna to get on that painting narcotic, Yeah, but we're just going to take the tip. That's all, just the tip. They call it plastic crack for a reason. Yeah. Huh. So look forward to that, guys, and we'll see you next Friday. This has been 40K Fanatics. Shane and Casey. Yeah. See ya. See you in the grim darkness of the far future, you 40K Fanatics. Peace.